Uh, it actually became part of the documentary that they that they did on this place. Yeah. So I, I can't take it down and clean it until we, we need the space. Right. But uh, that's what happens to a mask, or can happen to a mask. It happened to him and, and the buffalo. But then some masks, these are real old, these last couple. But um, is it like the heat that kind of gets to the humidity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then some of them are better than others. But Anti-gravity freedom machine. Oh yeah, yes. Originally, and that's yeah. that's what I devoted most of my life post rock fire explosion to. In the eighties and the nineties, I believed, fully believed, that I was going to be the father of modern email, and that wow. I was building this system that would connect the world together so we could all communicate through email someday. Yeah. And back in the eighties, nobody believed it. They all thought I was crazy because um, they said if I want to contact somebody, if I want to talk to somebody, I'll just pick up the phone and call. Them. Right. And uh, nobody believed that we would actually be typing to people someday. I had to invent this because we had all those restaurants out there I had to stay in touch with. 200 restaurants. So you actually had this in and working? Well, I had these, yes. I had a different version of this. Different version. It was actually based on the Apple IIe. Wow. So I had my software and a few plug-in cards on an Apple IIe and, and had it working. But by the 90s, we put it all on a chip and, and on our own little board and we're ready to go mainstream. You know, because nobody was going to buy Apple IIe's by 1990. Yeah. Freedom is always a very important concept to me and m mostly to my generation I mean we're all based on freedom because we didn't want I mean if there was ever a generation that didn't want to get married because we want to stay free it was my generation <laughs> but freedom in a lot of ways freedom to do what we want to do with our bodies and our you know lives and you know smoke what we want to smoke and drink what we want to drink you know it was all based on freedom so this though was the freedom to sleep when you want to sleep because people who want to reach you at 9 in the morning, screw it. They can send you a message. Right. And you can time shift your conversation with them. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, now wow. that sounds obvious. But yeah. back then, people didn't understand time shifting. But I was experimenting with it. And one of the coolest things is when somebody would write me with a problem at 9 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got up at 2, they had written me that they solved their problem. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I realized I never even really had to listen to. Right. If only I, all you have to do is sleep, sleep through them. Through them. Yeah. Well, it's the internet, the timing. Yeah, well, timing. you know, it, it, has, it has this gratuitous design curve. It doesn't do anything, it's just yeah. gratuitous. <laughs> wow. Somebody figured something out to put a drink in it. Yeah. Yeah. Write letter, well, archive letter, all new. Because letters. we weren't able to, yeah, you could just, you press this button to write a letter, and it gave you a clean sheet of paper. And then send a letter in. And then, yep, yeah, send it. That is awesome. And then, and then when you send it, it brings up a list of names, and you just punch the name that you want to send it to. Now, of course, normally we take the haunted elevator. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll take you down the haunted elevator and I'll come back up. Okay. That's, that's where all of them used to be. Yeah, which makes sense. Why? We never saw them. We never saw them in LA, but I remember them in Austin though when I was a kid. Whoa. Yeah. What, what is this? Per gallon. How'd you achieve that one? Just lightweight and a tiny engine. It's like, more like a scooter or a motorcycle. Wow. Wow. Is that Stargate back in there? What?
found some things. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We brought you, some you, can have, yeah. you can have those. Really? Yeah, yeah I've got plenty of those. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. That's really awesome, man. The tape is hilarious, man. Oh, look at that. So what is the fuel called, one more time? It's called carbohydrillium. About, about there, so they, they come up and they touch the meat. And it doesn't burn the meat. It's like you could leave the burger on this just like this, and it looks like it's got the meat on fire and burn it. But it's really just putting a delicious char on the outside. Mm. Like this. Mm, why is that? Something in the chemical makeup? That, well, the it's, it's, maybe it's the water in the fuel. But there's something about it that it just doesn't burn it like propane. It doesn't turn it into a block of coal. Mm -hmm. Wow. It, it just gives it a nice char on the outside and the inside stays, stays pink and medium. In fact, just out of curiosity, are your burgers medium? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Mine was medium. Fantastic. Good, thanks. Really fantastic. This has been our time here at uh, Electronimation by Creative Engineering. Truly amazing place. Aaron, we'll be back. This is dope. So I don't know about you, but I don't get to see uh, electro animatronic. He's a genius. Aaron's a genius. His creative ability is off the chain and off the scale. And I really can't say enough about the experience I just had. It was like going to Disneyland, but private and in a space that had basically not changed since 1983. And thank you, Aaron, for showing us your space. And I can't wait to see more of what you do. All right. I hope you're all having a great day. Don't forget to subscribe up there. Write things down there. Say, hey, I like you. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon.